Lori, it's so great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Natasha. Such an important topic especially for all the mums out there, right? Completely agree. What we went through all those 15 years is phenomenal. And all I want to do is now reach all those other families who struggle. So I know that your journey with nutrition, you know, it came to be because of your experience with your own two children. Can you share a little bit about, about that experience? Sure. Um, long story short, um, when my kids were four and five, we had a whole long list of issues that they were going through. Uh, picky eating, red cheeks, hyperactivity, um, gastro distress, random headaches, stomach aches, uh, dark circles under the eyes, bloated bellies, like on and on. Like insomnia, they were sleeping horribly, we were sleeping horribly, we were exhausted, we were getting no answers, and we tried specialist after specialist, and it just, it didn't make sense. So we were just, okay, at the end of our rope, let's look for answers. Um, and then my nutritionist at the time actually suggested a food allergy test. And we don't have allergies in the family, so I was like, are you sure? I trusted him, we did the test, and getting those results changed everything. Yeah. Because to see black and white that my children were reacting to all the foods that they were eating, gluten, dairy, um, and even things like pineapple. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea that you could well, children could react to these foods that they're not tolerating, let alone whole foods, right? Um, and that's not a common one, right? I mean, no, I know, but he was eating it every day, and that was right. the thing that was off the charts. So I didn't know that, and then I didn't know that all these things that we were seeing and going through with them were all the result of their intolerance and sensitivities to the foods they were eating. Wow. Phenomenal. Wow, what an eye-opening experience. Changed us forever. So now you work in the realm of allergies and kids and work with kids' health. And I know, I know in our industry anyways, in our, in our model of health and the holistic uh, sort of paradigm, there are three sort of classifications of allergies. There's full-blown you know, allergies, and then there's intolerances and sensitivities. So can you explain to the, to the viewers a little bit about the differences between those three and some of the symptoms, some of the common signs and symptoms of those three? Uh, definitely, because like what I lived through with my family starting and then kind of branching off into my extended family, including myself, um, it's now I think of it as a, a full spectrum and I even uh, dr grafted it out. Um, so yeah, I have the full blown like allergies and that's that IgE immediate reaction. Any kind of swelling of the lips, of the throat, of the face, there's hives, there could be vomiting right away and it's usually pretty clear. It's like within minutes of the food that they've eaten. So I always suggest to my families, you know, you want to go get this tested, you want to go see a doctor, you want to make sure you have everything under control. That's EpiPen territory, EpiPen, right? Yeah. And we were there with my youngest. He would like eat a hot dog and his lips would swell like in just within a few minutes and we're like, what? So we had to learn all this stuff. You have to remove the allergen and then be very, very careful and then just be under guidance, right, for that category because that's life-threatening. So you want to have some caution there and know what you're doing. Definitely. Um, and then you slide down the spectrum and you have um, intolerance. And this, it's a little bit harder to track because it could happen like hours later, like maybe a meal or two after. But what you're going to get coming out at that time, you're going to get things like dark circles under the eyes, which are called allergy shiners. Um, you're going to get maybe um, uh, bright red cheeks, bright red ears. That's another sign of um, in children that I see a lot is that, and hyperactivity. They, yeah. they start, you know, really reacting and get really, really hyper. And this could show up hours later. So this is an intolerance. Oh, and I can't forget either those like random gastro bloating, sure. belly pains as well. Like that's Diarrhea also, sometimes too. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's also, it could happen a couple of hours later. So I always tell my family, start to correlate and track these symptoms. And then you will always find it. If you write down your meals, when you look at it over time, you'll be able to find it. Food logging is so helpful, isn't it? It really helps you understand the connections because like you said, it could be hours later, sometimes even a day later. Some people with dairy intolerance, you know, it's a full day until they have a reaction. So and you that hit it food right journal there. Is, is critical for tracking and figuring out what those, yeah. 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 So that's that whole, then we get into the last, um, on, this, on the spectrum is the sensitivity. And sometimes that doesn't even show up on an allergy test. So just like we were saying, it's a full day later, a full 24 hours later. And what I see coming out in my clients and myself and my family, eczema, that's how long for it to take sure. to pop out. 
migraines. This is a huge one. So again, what we just said, my boys taught me to track it. I've had migraines my whole life. And I always thought, oh, you know, they're just stress or hormones or something. No, my marker was MSG. Wow. So every time we would go and eat out, I had to track it. And then 24 hours later, boom, I'd have a migraine and I was down for the next 24 hours. And that, that's a lot of pain. So, okay, you want to track and you want to find out if you've got a trigger for that. Right. But that's what they taught me. So we cut that out and my migraines are gone. I know what my trigger is. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So we know there's a connection with allergies and the gut and the brain. You know, so many kids these days seem to be struggling with behavioral issues or learning difficulties or um, depression and anxiety even with children. It's really, really sad to see. And, and we know as practitioners there's a connection between the gut and allergies and the brain. Can you get into that a little bit? I know that could be a whole hour topic, but, you know, in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what I do, because this is, this is the million dollar question, like really, we're all so different, we're all like snowflakes, and what we've been exposed to even from birth counts, right, depending on our tolerance level. So to highlight that question, I think I'll just walk you through what happened with my oldest. Sure. And just to kind of show the cascade of what we went through, and now that I'm commonly seeing with families over and over and over again, and all the testing that we did to get to the root of what it was. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> he was born um, and that's another thing that a lot of people don't know is that baby inherits mommy's bowel flora so that means baby inherits all mommy's issues so I've got IBD so my child got it compromised um, bowel flora microbiome uh, and also my lactose intolerance but I didn't know that so the problem started when we introduced dairy uh, we introduced formula, and then after that it was milk, and then it was yogurt, and then it was ice cream and cheese, and he was like colic, he was poor sleeping in pain, bloated belly, crying all the time, tantruming, just, um, we did not know, we did not recognize the signs, I just didn't know. So you keep going, and you keep going, um, you keep eating, he became an addict, because I, I learned yeah. that these foods, like, they give you an adrenaline rush, and you constantly yes. want them, right? And then I see my families, they become just... They just want that food and nothing else because then after they eat it, they feel bloated and full and just can't eat anything else. Yeah. Um, it's so a vicious cycle. It is. And that's where we were. So um, from there, uh, it moved into eczema, um, hyperactivity. Um, he regressed. He lost his words. Um, wow. Yeah, gastro. Um, and then, of course, boom, diagnosis, yeah. right? Yeah. So then you're like, then you're at full stop. You get the diagnosis and you're, it's a wake up call. You're like, what now? Okay, so what are we dealing with now? What's going on? Trying to find answers. So we tried a few medications. They did not work. They made them worse. So we said, this is not the answer for us. So we went and looked natural remedies and like I was saying, the, the food allergy test um, to find out what's going on, to find out what is happening in his metabolism. So the thing that was happening most, um, and that was uh, tip the scales, I would say, mm -hmm. Uh, the ear infections. Mm. So learning that dairy causes mucus, mm -hmm. and it could be that chronic runny nose, that chronic cough, ear infections, or even asthma. That's the mucus from the the protein in in cow dairy. Mm -hmm. He had them repeatedly, so he took antibiotics after antibiotics after antibiotics. And what I learned, antibiotics don't discriminate; they wipe out all bowel flora, good and bad. Right. So. What is not in our diet today, and that's the good guys, there are no more probiotics in our diet today, and there's sugar and sugar and starch. So all that diet feeds the pathogens. So then you start to have dysbiosis. Yes. You start to have an imbalance of microbiome, and that was starting to be his bloated belly. Did not know. Then from there, um, all that, uh, what do I want to say? All that dysbiosis causes the pathogens to just overgrowth, and then you learn about intestinal permeability, right? Leaky the whole gut. leaky gut. <laughs> so you learn that the tight junctions of the stomach where you're supposed to filter out the nutrients and the food start to become inflamed. Then you've got that systemic inflammation and the junctions start to loosen and then particles of food start to get into the bloodstream. Then the immune system attacks and mounts an offense against those foods and then you constantly have immune system on high. Like he was getting sick all the time yeah. too. Like just... Yeah dark circles, sick all the time, runny nose. Um, but yeah, that's what's happening. So the inflammation, the food now, the, the, the um, immune system is on high. 
Um, and then because it goes into your bloodstream, it eventually makes the way to the brain, right? Yes. Over time. So then that's when I look back and I started seeing, I, I called it interference. I call it interference for the brain. And that disrupts their learning, their attention, their mood. Mm -hmm. their, like he would tantrum all the time and he would run away from us. But like when we just started pulling everything back and we started healing, all this completely changed. Yeah. And the cool thing <laughs> is, is the body is self-healing, right? Yeah. So I always say, yeah. if you do some things to remove the causes of that stress on the body and provide some important nutrients to the body, it can heal itself. And the digestive system is well known for healing itself when provided with the right support. So, so on that note, you know, I hear parents often say, my kids have outgrown their allergies. Um, do you believe that intolerances, sensitivities, and even allergies can be fully healed? Yes. Um, we lived it. I, I hear this all the time. I hear people like it's outgrown or I've got a new one I never had before. So you can grow into new ones. Um, so the thing that I wanted to, to highlight on that, and that's funny, is because when I finally went, to, went back to school after like all those years of handling my boys and trying everything and removing the foods and putting supplements and, and probiotics and healing the gut, mm -hmm. there's actually a protocol. Right. <laughs> the 5R protocol. Right. right. But you know what? I did it not knowing it was even a protocol. Yes. Yeah, so what are those 5Rs? Five, five, five <laughs> um, and it's funny because it just made sense to me. So... Um, you remove the food, you remove the allergen, then you replace it with something more nutrition, more nutrient dense, um, and then you repair, you repair the gut lining, you heal the gut, probiotics and coconut and aloe vera, and then you repopulate the microbiome with the good guys. So probiotics, fermented foods, um, kombucha, kimchi, sauerkraut, um, and then after, uh, eventually, if you want, you can get into like reintroduce the food, which is what we did um, way down the line when all their inflammation was gone, they were healthy, and they would slowly reintroduce the food. And that's a process, right? It's not going to happen overnight. For most people, these allergies have taken time, especially if it's an intolerance or a sensitivity. It's taken time to develop, so it is going to take some time to uh, to, to reverse for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a process that's worth every bit of effort, right? Because it impacts your cognitive health, it impacts your energy, it impacts your moods, it impacts everything. And the thing that I wanted to say to that as well is that um, for sure, like you can, um, when they say outgrow, it's like, there's, thing, there's the things that you can do to make it heal, like the five R's, right? Yeah. But outgrowing it, it just morphs into something else. Like Sometimes if you haven't, it goes deeper into the body. Exactly. Right? That's what we learned too. Yes. If you haven't done the things and you keep the diet the same, outgrow means, okay, it'll pop up in something else, yes. right? Or um, you can even grow in, like watching that leaky gut that we were talking about, you can even grow into new ones. Like again, my oldest, halfway through the journey when he was like preteens, um, he started going off again. And again, I had to track and correlate. And guess what it was? It was potatoes. Wow. He was eating French fries wow. and chips and mashed potato potatoes. Allergy. Wow. Potatoes change his personality. They make him defiant and irritable and just he has a headache the next day. Wow. And there's all these flags that are there. And I'm like, hmm, this isn't my normal guy. This is not his baseline. So again, you track and correlate potatoes, root, starch. Wow. So... <laughs> Out they went, <laughs> and then you start to do the five R's all over again. So yeah, your, your body evolves with you, right? You're, you change over time, so it makes sense that your diet and nutrients change as well, but it also keep watch of those things, because again, it can be um, possible to, to develop an intolerance to a For whole sure. food. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, like pineapples or potatoes. Pineapples or potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on to um, some common allergens. So let's talk about some of the most common allergens out there. I know it's possible to be allergic to anything, but there are some that definitely stand out. Um, and a lot of people aren't even aware that they're intolerant or sensitive to these things, right? So if you can list off maybe the top, you know, five to 10 most common allergens, and then we'll go into some replacements. For sure, for sure. Um, so, huh. What I see now with my family is I work with so many different groups and so many different families who come to me with a big long list. So I'm seeing the same things over and over again. Yeah. So I would say hands down the number one thing that people are like on any end of the spectrum for is dairy. 
cow, dairy, and people just, a lot of people don't know it or they have a severe reaction. I'm, I'm even hearing anaphylaxis to dairy now wow. at like, you know, um, daycare age. Sure. And you know, like no more cheese strains and yogurt, like, no, it's dangerous. So um, again, like I was saying, like that runny nose or those ear infections or that chronic cough, like a Asthma. mucus, right? It's like, I just say to me, remove the dairy. You have so many wonderful alternatives. Now remove the dairy for two weeks and you'll get a new baseline and see how you feel. Um, so dairy's big. Gluten um, is the second for that, right? Celiac and IBD on the rise. What's going on with the food? Why are we not tolerating gluten? It's a really big molecule and really hard to break down and digest. So gluten is in wheat. It's in rye, barley, spelt, kamut. It's in a lot of foods. Yeah. A lot of your baked goods, your baked breads. Goods even things like crackers, crackers and cookies. And pastas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that one's a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one. You can do it, but you can find other meals and other substitutes to, to swap out all this wheat um, and gluten if you have that um, intolerance. Yeah. And then I would say after that is corn. Yeah. Corn is a big one. People don't understand that too, like how hard it is to break down and digest. Yeah. Um, even popcorn, same thing. Uh, and then nuts, of course, the big one is peanuts, right? I think we hear a lot of that about that one because it's so immediate and it's so life-threatening. Yeah. So the peanuts is a big one and then it's usually all nuts. They're just afraid to try any kind of nut, these families I work mm. with. Um, and then, you know what made the list is um, food dyes now. Food yeah. dyes and food additives have now made that list, especially in the families that I see because any child with a diagnosis or with challenges or with special needs, um, they start to be really, really insensitive. Whatever's going on in their metabolism, they're just not able to process these chemicals. Yeah. So I know that they're starting to have labels now on food, you know, red food dye 40 or whatever is like top of the list of, you know, you It's amazing it. eh? because there's so little used <laughs> typically in a recipe. Like if you were to make an icing or something, you would probably put two drops of, of food dye in there, but just that small amount is enough to trigger an allergy in so many people. I, um, I had a family and that's, these moms are amazing because they know they, your child comes to a certain age and you have to kind of teach them the lesson. So you went to school, it was Valentine's Day, everything is red. His son asked, you know, can I have this lollipop? And the mom said yes, knowing exactly what would happen. He had it and he went bonkers the rest of the day. And that's wow. what she says. Personality, hyperactivity, just couldn't sleep, you know, running to the bathroom. So then when after all that went, she's like, remember how you felt? What did you have? Yeah. Teaching them to correlate. So yeah. it, it's phenomenal. But yeah, you wouldn't think in a color, in an, in an additive that this would happen, but these children are not able to tolerate it. So what's the fifth one on your list? Oh, uh, eggs. Eggs, <laughs> That yeah. one is still there. Yeah. Eggs, there's still population of people. And there's tons of things that you can do now. I think a lot of the pre-made, some of the things that you have on the shelf with like eggless or the egg replacers. Yes. Um, but there's, a, there's yes. some other sneaky tricks that you can do too. So yeah, do you want to get into some of these replacements here? I know, Sure. you know, what's really cool is um, 10, 20 years ago, if you were gluten intolerant, there were so few products that tasted good, if any, right? They all tasted <laughs> like cardboard. Um, but yep. nowadays, there's so many alternatives out there. There's no reason to, to need to eat those foods anymore. Yep. They're very easy to replace. Exactly. So go for it. Tell us what you've got here. Okay. Um, I'll start on that end because this is, you've got a great assortment here of everything that you can swap out for dairy. Like I said, that's where I start with most of my families is like, just start trading out the dairy one thing at a time, one thing at a time. And you've got some great alternative nut milks. Um, if you can't tolerate nuts, you've got rice, you've got coconut. Um, same thing for ice cream, coconut ice cream. And coconut as well. ice cream is amazing. I and know. the yogurt. Like you wouldn't even know the difference. <laughs> we, my boys, we still eat this because we love it. And it's just, we feel better. We feel better eating it. And you still, it's still a nice treat. So I always just tell the families, swap one thing out at a time and then see how you feel. And as little as two, three weeks, you're going to have a different baseline to see if your child couldn't tolerate the dairy. For sure. Um, and then, oh yeah, here's the gluten-free stuff. So these, we love them, thank you so much. These are amazing wraps, <laughs> totally gluten-free and they don't fall apart and they taste great. My boys are so happy. Throw some hummus and some chicken and some lettuce in there. They're there great, you go. aren't they? They're amazing. They um, hold together. Most gluten-free wraps to fall apart. <laughs> these hold, hold together. These hold together. Because <laughs> we tried so many. I love Bob's Red Mill. <laughs> um, he, oh, he was a godsend finding that and, and seeing the whole section and then trying all the different flours. You have bean flour, you have nut flour, you have rice flour. 
tapioca, you have coconut, there's so many, and then he gets into the blends, which are incredible. Because you quickly learn gluten-free baking, you can't substitute one for one, you gotta have a blend. Unless you have a blend, but yes. And what I love about his products too is a lot of them are nutritious. Some gluten-free products are just white, white rice flour or white, you know, potato starch. They're very starchy. They don't, uh, maybe they may contain a lot of sugar. Um, so there are products now that you can eat that are gluten-free, but also good for you. Yeah, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And then um, my families that um, are really uh, sensitive to the nuts, their seeds. And it's so funny because when I say that, it's like, okay, no, the nut family is a no-go, but have you considered seeds? And I get this, no. <laughs> <laughs> seeds are a different family and they're just as nutritious, right? They got yeah. the fiber and all the nutrients in it. You can have seed butters, you pair that with like a fruit, you can put it on like gluten-free cracker or even toast. Like there's still a good alternative to have and to get that protein and fat into them. So I always say nut butters. I love this brand too because we've literally explored every nut under like okay. pistachio and Brazil. Love that brand. Yeah. Um, but really, really great alternatives. You can go for seeds if you can't do nuts. Yes, my little guy, he's my picky eater. He loves to have sunflower butter jam sandwiches for lunch. So as, instead of your peanut butter and <laughs> jam, it's sunflower it. butter jam. That's the other thing. <laughs> Unclean <can't>. free bread. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't send it to school. That's the hard, that's the question that I get a lot. You can send the seeds to school, though. You can send the yeah. seeds to school. Yeah. So the other things I was talking about is that the, the food additives and the food dyes and things like that is you literally have to start reading ingredients and just start removing them. Like yeah. there's no way around that. Yeah. Um, corn, same thing, There's other than corn on the cob and popcorn and, you know, starting to read a few labels and seeing what they're, that's not so hard to remove. Um, eggs is the other one. So you can literally, the other little trick that I talked about was you can make something called a chia or a flax egg. So, so easy. <laughs> that's your, that's your egg replacer right there. Literally a tablespoon you put in, I think it's like quarter cup of water and if you just let it sit for a little bit it becomes very glutinous and very, and you throw that in and that will help bind everything yeah so yeah. it's this, just these little tricks and tips that you learn after gluten-free dairy free baking for a long time yeah. you can get there yeah, yeah for sure absolutely thank you so much that was such valuable information i'm sure this will help so many parents out there who are struggling um, and, and on that note, if anybody wants some extra guidance or wants some help, where can they find you? Do you have a website? Oh, yes, please. Um, allergiesandme.ca. Um, same thing for our email is P at allergiesandme.ca. Um, all I want to do is be that help that I needed 15 years ago when I was just literally unknown territory and you're just walking through this. But I met so many wonderful people, very supportive, that helped me out on my journey. Now I just want to give back and reach those families. And awesome. Well, we're lucky to have you. Thank you. Thank you.